everyone, this is Melissa, and I'm the Talkative Introvert. In today's episode, I have another guest on today, so I'll try to keep this intro a little short, but I do have a little PSA, if you will. Um, If you live in America, then you know it's voting season, so please don't forget to register and to vote this year. A lot of people keep saying voting is important more than ever this year, but honestly, I hate that statement because voting is always important. As an American, please exercise that right. We are very fortunate to have that right. Um, A coworker actually shared... um, The saying that is taught to children in the Middle East, and that is, a closed mouth lives a longer life. And that really shocked me, because what that meant is that um, people who talk against the government there, you know, tend to not live a longer life. I won't get into detail about that. I'm sure you can read between the lines. Um, And that just really shocked me, because I grew up in America, and I knew my right to vote. I knew that I had a place and a voice to talk about, you know, politics and to make a decision on what our government can or cannot do. And people don't get to practice that right in other countries, right? And so I think it's so important to remember how fortunate we are to have a say in our government here and how important it is to exercise that right because not a lot not a lot of people take full advantage of that. So I will add in the description links on how to register to vote. I believe some states you you can still register. I believe here in California you can still re- register to vote. Um, and then I'll also link where to get information about what will be in your ballot because voting is more than just voting for the president. And voting happens more than just every four years. There are de- there are still local elections, and then the ballot this year will include, depending on your area, uh, will include new props, you know, and appointing new staff such as the chief of police, mayor, senators, what have you. And so please um, take a look at ballotpedia.org. So please check that out to see what will be in your local ballot. And all right. So I just want to have that little PSA. I'll probably um, do a little voting PSA until the election starts, just because if I do have any American listeners who are new to politics and new to voting, I hope that I can still reach out to you and hopefully encourage you to go out there and vote. All right, guys, let's get into the episode. Joining me today is my sister-in-law, Leah Kiyama. Um, If you haven't heard her episode, she was in one previously. It's episode 15, where she talks about her move across the country from California to Virginia. So go check that out. Um, But today we're going to be talking about our Myers-Briggs personality test results. So hi, Leah. Hey, I'm back. I'm so excited to do this one. Um, Oh, and then also Leah is also AKA or also known as Louie because I don't really call her Leah, but uh, I don't know how many times I'm going to call you Louie throughout the episode, but just in case, you know, because they're like, who the hell's Um, (laughs) Louie? So many nicknames. Yeah. So um, I posted this on my Instagram page that I took the 16 personalities quiz, which is basically the free version of the actual Myers-Briggs test. Um, Because the real Myers-Briggs test, I think it's more like comprehensive and it costs money. So the 16 personalities one is free and I'm hopefully just as, uh, hopefully it's just as accurate as the real one. But, um, But yeah, so my result, I got the INTJ dash A. I got INTJ-T. So we basically got the same thing, Mm -hmm. but um, just slightly different. So I had to like figure out what the difference was. And so um, I wanted to like kind of just briefly read read through it. The 16 personalities website, I'll link it in the description, but it's uh, basically, I did a little summary. So I'm not going to go through the whole thing. But basically, so I'm a, so that's considered an assertive architect, whereas a T is a turbulent architect. And um, based on the summary, so Louie, you are often fueled by your worries and concerns. Um, (laughs) Sounds about right. (laughs) um, And then whereas, uh, so for assertive architects, they're a little more confident in the, and like more reassured in their choices, I guess. Um, but they're both ambitious, but their motivations are different. 
um, assertive architects are more motivated from within and their inspiration to act is based on confidence in their rationality. Um, turbul turbulent architects move are moved forward in life to a greater degree by their concerns, worries, and how others might see them. So I feel like, I don't know if this is wrong or right, but I feel like um, I'm more, I think more about things or I'm more of a rational, logical, like don't really put people's feelings into consideration kind of choice maker. Whereas you are more in tune with like the people around you and all that. Yeah. Do you think that's accurate? <laughs> I think it's super accurate as much as I don't want to be that way. And mm -hmm. I've tried to convince myself like for years, like, Oh, you don't actually care what people think about you. Blah, blah, blah. You shouldn't care. I do care <laughs> a lot. <laughs> most of the time. There, there are some times where, like, I can get myself in that mindset, but I think probably, like, 80, 90% of the time, I do care what people think, maybe even more than that. Yeah. I know I was reading through this whole thing, like, the, the actual article, not just the summary, mm -hmm. and I was like, yeah, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. It's so, it's almost scary how accurate it is. Yeah, I know. Like, I want everyone to take it. I yeah. like, I don't know. Like, every new person, I want to ask them what their Myers mm -hmm. Briggs personality is. Because, like, I was reading mine, and like, it's true because sometimes people view me as kind of heartless or soulless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That sounds bad. <laughs> it sounds no. really bad. I, yeah, I know. But, like, I. I have good intentions. It's just that um, I I prefer the rationality of things rather than yeah. people's emotions. And I, is, I feel like I feel like I still get that too, even though I'm not quite as much like that as you are. Mm -hmm. But I'll still get that all the time. I'm like, no, I'm I'm not that cold hearted. <laughs> I'm yeah. just trying to be rational and logical. Yeah. Cause it's not really being cold hearted. It just seems that we're being cold hearted, mm -hmm. but it's for like it, the, my thought process is supposed to benefit everyone, you know, like yeah. in a long, like, I don't know, harsh love, I guess, or whatever yeah. you want to call it. <laughs> That's one of the, the biggest things that I, I remember watching a video about like INTJs and they were talking about that. And I was like, wow, <laughs> I never realized that, like, there are other people who think that way. And yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. It was just so weird. It was like I was talking to someone who was in my brain. Yeah. It that freaked me out a little bit. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> obviously, so one thing we should mention is um, for females, the INTJ personality trait is the rarest. Mm -hmm. It's tied, I actually have like a little chart right here. It's tied with the ENTJs. So only 0.9% of the female population test as INTJ or ENTJ. So, Which is so. crazy that we even know each other. Yeah. <laughs> and we Two just so happen. Yeah, we just so happen to know each other. And it's crazy because like, I never, I don't know, growing up, I felt really different and like, mm -hmm. I don't know, like I don't, um, I'm different from my family, like really okay. different from my family. And it was really weird to like meet you <laughs> because mm -hmm. I'm like, why are we so similar? Yeah. And it's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's how I felt. Even with, well, with Brandon, it was a little bit better because he's, I mean, we're not the same personality type. Mm-hmm. But I feel like we just have a lot of the same tendencies. But we didn't we didn't like get along until I was in high school. So like as a kid, I felt like no one was like me. Yeah. <laughs> I never met anyone that was like me. And I always thought that I was just like super weird and I'm always trying to be like other people because I was so weird and so different. It was like a bad thing to be that weird and different. Yeah, I was literally just about to say that. I was saying, like, I feel like I fully embraced my INTJ-ness, <laughs> like, yeah. when I got older, because then when I was little, just trying to conform to what, yeah. you know, everybody else is doing. Yeah, and people will, like, tell you, like, oh, why don't you do things like that person? Why aren't you like that person? Or, 
like I would get that a lot as a kid, Mm -hmm. especially in our family. It sounds really bad, but being like kind of the black sheep of the family, sometimes people would be like, oh, why aren't you like so and so? Mm-hmm. Like, do things like them why don't you like that why don't you like doing this <laughs> I'm like because I just don't yeah and you hear it they'll talk about it yeah <laughs> you hear family members talk about it they're not they're, they're so blunt bluntness <laughs> yeah <laughs> she's so blunt it's, a, it's it's a good thing in some sense yeah oh I want to read this bullet point because hey like made me kind of laugh, but um, mm-hmm. so this one says, while neither personality type is likely to be very comfortable with their emotions, mm-hmm. turbulent architects are more likely likely to express theirs and use them to connect with others by being more approachable. And I remember from the last episode how people love to talk to you. That's exactly <laughs> what I thought of just now. <laughs> And I was like, no one ever wants to talk to me. I am yeah. not approachable. Yeah, so it's so weird because we've we have this same well now we know that we have the same personality type, but mm-hmm. we've always known that we were very, very, very similar. But then there are things like that that make us complete opposites almost. Yeah. And it's really just that little difference in that last category. I know. I feel like you're just more in tune with your emotions. And um, I'm not like a good example is I don't know if you remember this, but um, what was oh, remember when you used to work at salon that salon here uh-huh. in California? And yeah, I got my hair done for graduation, uh-huh. and um, it was like finally done, and I really really loved it, but I didn't express <laughs> that. And then your boss like asked <laughs> you the next day, <laughs> like, does she like it? Yeah, I remember that. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, oh, man, because I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to, like, be expressive in, like, because in my head, I'm like, yeah, this is really, really beautiful. (laughs) But but externally, all I said was, like, it's nice, thank you, or something like that. (laughs) Yeah, I I do notice that sometimes with you. But it's funny, though, because... I still feel that way. Like when I compare myself to, especially like extroverts, Mm -hmm. when I compare myself to other people, I feel the same way as you. Like, I feel like I'm not in tune with my emotions. I don't always know how to express them, Mm -hmm. especially negative emotion. I'm like, I cannot be around someone. I don't like being sad around people or I will never get angry really in public. Almost never. It's very rare. Mm -hmm. for me to be like visibly angry um there's only one time that I can think of that I actually like really screamed and yelled at Fabian and I shocked myself (laughs) I've never done it since then and I scared myself I think more than I scared him (laughs) (laughs) oh I can never do that yeah I did it one time and it just it was the weirdest strangest feeling ever and I don't ever want to feel that again. <laughs> yeah. I can't but, deal with intense emotion. Yeah. It's more of like, I don't even know. One, one thing I did read or hear about in a video I can't remember is that like, I don't know if this is true for you, but when you experience like a really intense emotion, especially anger or sadness or something, you just kind of like go catatonic. Okay. And I feel like that happens to me mm-hmm. where Fabian's actually complained about it before, but like, I don't know. It's almost like I don't know how to process these emotions. So I just kind of like shut off until I can figure it out. But yeah, that makes sense because like, um, not to like make this dark or anything, but <laughs> when, um, like when my dad died, mm-hmm. I, um, like after like we found him and whatever and they took his body and blah blah blah. so like when I came home I literally just like went to bed um in the dark and just laid there like in complete silence and like Brandon was in the living room I think and I was just like complete silence complete Mm -hmm. darkness and I just like laid there yeah I've definitely had those moments too Mm -hmm. 
because it's like completely different and hopefully john doesn't get mad at me but when like this is kind of shows like the different personalities because john i don't even need to know his myers briggs to know he's the complete opposite of me yeah and, but his reaction was extremely like what's the, like very emotional and very like uh-huh. um i don't know what the word is i don't want to say theatrical because that sounds wrong but like yeah but you know what I mean. It's very expressive. expressive. Yeah. yeah. Very expressive. But I wasn't like that. I was like the complete opposite. I was just alone for myself in the dark for like a mm-hmm. few hours until I, I guess I was trying to process it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much how I am too, especially around, around people. I'll almost never express it. I don't even, I rarely even cry in front of people. I mean, mm-hmm. sometimes it's just hard not to, but yeah, I try my hardest to hold it all in but then usually when I'm alone like that's when it kind of all comes out Mm -hmm. and I'll sometimes let it come out but I try really really hard not to (laughs) yeah yeah same like I think Brandon's probably the only one I've well I don't know if I've fully let everything out probably yeah with Brandon Mm -hmm. I mean it's been 13 years I'm sure I did a few (laughs) times but (laughs) for the most part I don't like show that um around people yeah. especially family I don't know why something about being vulnerable I guess oh, I don't yeah. know it's so weird but yeah that bullet point like the especially the part this is um very uh, like what is it neither personality type is likely to be very comfortable with their emotions <laughs> I was like yeah that's exactly right <laughs> that's so yes. true like <laughs> It's crazy. Like my inability to express excitement has made a lot of people like, <laughs> like, I don't know, wonder about me if I'm like yeah. a robot. Like I remember that time. So remember when you visited Fabian in Virginia, so you didn't live there yet. We were, yeah. we were still roommates mm-hmm. and you came home with like, I think you bought everyone shot glasses and we opened mm-hmm. it like in front of him, like via video chat. Mm-hmm. And then it came to my turn and you said, uh, I think you like warned him and you said <laughs> like, just, just know that Mia will probably like it, but she won't show it. Yeah. <laughs> and then like when I opened it, I said, oh, it's cool. And then you both just started laughing. <laughs> Cause, like I did like it. We still have it. It's still in our cupboard, but <laughs> I just, oh, God. oh. Yeah. That sounds about right. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, Awful. I do like I do like to warn people because I I know that that affects people a lot mm-hmm. when you don't show emotion. Yeah. But I I understand it because I know how you are, and I like I to a certain level I like can be that way too. So I mm-hmm. understand how uncomfortable it is. Yeah, I feel like sometimes I'm I will like. Not that I'm faking the emotion. It's just I will purposely make the emotion bigger than I really would normally. Yeah, you like intensify it. Yeah, I do. I like intensify it just to make sure that the other person knows. I'm going to make Fabian take one of them next time. (laughs) Because that's what he did last time. Oh, he did? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) So we we were talking about... intensifying your emotions yeah that sounds so bad but it's just like I I actually do feel that emotion I'm just intensifying it so the other person knows that I am happy basically yeah no I get that because that's what made me (laughs) I went down this rabbit hole but it made me think that I was a psychopath but like (laughs) I don't think a psycho you know it sounds stupid but um because I'll, um, there is this interview that someone was having with a sociopath, but there's like a slight difference, but um, uh-huh. not a slight difference. There's a difference. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so I thought I was a psychopath because one of the traits of one is that they mimic the mm-hmm. emotions of somebody else um, just because they don't necessarily feel that. Like they don't feel empathy. I mean, I feel empathy, but there are a lot of times where I just mimic the emotion because that's not the same emotion I'm getting, but I know that's like the normal, the normal emotion Mm -hmm. you're supposed to be feeling. 
right? <laughs> yeah, I think I feel like we've had conversations about this before because I felt the same way. Like yeah. I got a little scared at some point too because I was like, am, "Is this normal? Like, am I supposed to be this like unemotional <laughs> or whatever?" Mm-hmm. And that's funny because I was looking up like INTJ stereotypes, mm-hmm. and one of them is that we're like sociopaths or psychopaths. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, ooh, I don't want to be like, I don't want to be titled that. Yeah. And that freaked me out because of like the association of psychopaths and sociopaths and people, you know, associate them with murderers. And uh-huh. we just finished watching Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> and a um, lot of villains are INTJs apparently. Yeah. And I was, I don't know, that scared me. Just, I think mainly because we just finished watching Dexter and because <laughs> So his relationship with um, Rita, uh-huh. and like, I feel like I'm Dexter and then Brandon's Rita because Brandon's <laughs> more in tuned with his emotions. Yeah. And so <laughs> I don't know. I was like, man, I really hope I'm not, but I feel like <laughs> I would know. I would know if I am. Yeah. I think, sure. I think you're okay. Cause you would never hurt a fly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's but one again, thing that, what? <laughs> No, that so the interview with the sociopath, the guy was saying, um, because that because there's that stereotype that murderers are sociopaths or whatever. Yeah. And the guy asked him, like, what do you feel about that misconception? And then the guy said that, well, it, there's no logical reason for me to kill someone, therefore I wouldn't. And I was thinking, well, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> So it's like, well, I still can be because it doesn't mean I want to kill someone. It's just there's no beneficial, yeah. you know, there's no benefit to it. So Yeah, everything's surrounded by logic. Yeah, basically. exactly. But I don't think I am one. <laughs> so. yeah, I had this, so I had this conversation with um, Erica's dad when he came to visit we were all just like, we're out to dinner, just talking and stuff. And I don't know how this came up, probably because we were talking about like what I want to do. So, you know, but like, just so everyone knows, I Mm. want to be a forensic pathologist assistant. So I want to do autopsies and stuff like that. So basically I just want to work with dead people. And (laughs) I remember telling him, I feel like I've told a couple people this, but I feel like in another life, like if I, if I didn't have a conscience, mm-hmm. I would probably make a really good serial killer. That's a and good point. Had, yeah, we had this conversation. <laughs> I think it's funny. I think other people that I tell don't really think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> and then he he walks into our house. And you've never been here before, but in our living room, which I did not realize this until he said something. But he walks into our house and he goes, he looks around and he's like, I could see how she could be a serial killer because really? I have a lot of skulls everywhere, Oh, which I did not realize. Like, I don't feel like I have a lot of skulls everywhere. Uh-huh. I just, I, I have an obsession with bones. I really like bones. And that's what made me want to get into like the autopsy business basically. But cause we have a big tapestry with like two skeletons dancing on it. Mm-hmm. Like this huge tapestry it covers the whole wall. Um, we, I have, this skull that I just use as a decoration on the TV stand. Um, there's like another pair of skeletons on the record player. Um, there's just like a bunch of other little, they're little things. So you'd, I feel like you don't really notice them, but he did. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought that was just so funny because I've always kind of felt like I was always scared that I I might be a sociopath or a psychopath, but then I remind myself like, oh, you can't actually like hurt anything. Like, yeah, I could never so have a conscience. Yeah, I could never hurt an animal, especially. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I want to work with dead people is because I'm too scared to be like a nurse or anything that works with live people. Because what if I make a mistake and I accidentally kill someone? So yeah. I know I had, well, I didn't have this conversation with anybody. I had this conversation in my head to myself, but (laughs) (laughs) but like along the same lines as you, like, I think 
and just gonna sound really bad, but I would never do it because I have a conscience and I have ethics. Mm -hmm. But I think scientists who do like like ex human experiment experiments are mm -hmm. fascinating. Oh, like, I do too. Extremely fascinating. Like if I was if I wasn't so lazy <laughs> and didn't really care for school, I would probably go to school for um for neuro. Like I love the human oh, brain yeah. and I love yeah. that you can like tweak something mm -hmm. and completely change a person. Oh, like, I know. It's so interesting. Yeah. It's so fascinating. Like how, like just a little, like you just cut like a little tiny bit of a brain and you can go from like speaking eloquently to just like singing or <laughs> like, <laughs> or being like a super calm person to like an angry person I or know. like, it's crazy. That's why like human experiments are just so fascinating. Yeah. There's so many things you can alter about the human yeah. body. It's, it's definitely so interesting. It's just because I feel like we have a pretty good way of disconnecting like the human aspect with the actual physical like body. Like mm -hmm. it's just, it's like, it's a body. It's not really the person. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. That probably doesn't make sense to a lot of people. <laughs> it probably <laughs> sounds really scary. <laughs> Yeah. But <laughs> I swear I'm not a scary person. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to cut people open just willy nilly. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. Like I could never, like you said, like I can't even kill an animal. Like I, um, what is it? Like some of your family members, um, like your Reno family, um, mm -hmm. they go hunting. And I was like, I could never uh, do that. I could not. No, I, I can't even hunting. kill a spider. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even kill spiders. Like the only, the only thing that I'm okay with killing are mosquitoes and then occasionally cockroaches. I'm just terrified of cockroaches. So I don't want to get close enough to have to kill it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but those are the only two things where I'm like, yes, you can die because <laughs> I hate you. Mm -hmm. But other yeah. than that, like I, I'll, I'll put spiders in a cup and take them outside. Like, I I can't kill anything. I just feel mm -hmm. so bad. I can't even hurt a person. Like I've never have I never? No, that's not true. But like in my adult life, I have never like hurt someone like physically. I've never mm -hmm. um I've never like punched someone yeah, or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. Like I don't think I could, you know. Yeah. I'd rather just talk talk it out. Yeah, like, and, and we don't, we don't have, like, I feel like we just don't have strong enough emotions to do that anyway. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's probably why. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a good thing, though. Yeah. So, so yeah, uh, we would never be murderers. It's just, you know, <laughs> fascinating things that we think about in our heads. Yeah. So, it's just a stereotype. We're not sociopaths or psychopaths. Mm -hmm. Or robotic, or <laughs> robotic. emotionless. <laughs> I like to say Vulcan. You know. <laughs> yeah, we just we just don't know how to express it as well as yeah. people would like us to. But internally, you know, I'm squealing with joy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! I know. Uh, I had trouble. I think I mentioned this to you in our group chat. Mm -hmm. Um, not trouble, but like. I guess I have a monotone voice, which you can't tell on the podcast. Um, yeah. Louis, Louis mentioned to me that I, ha I use my customer service voice on the podcast, but I think that's just because I know people are listening. Yeah. So I kind of I kind of um, put emotion into it. Um, I feel like it also kind of changes whether you have a guest or not. Yeah? A little bit. I'll have to go back and like really listen to it, but I feel like when it's just you – you have a little bit more of that customer service voice, mm -hmm. but then when you're with other people, you're a little bit more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've noticed that too. Like just now I said, mm -hmm. and, <laughs> um, <laughs> I notice um, when I do, when I do listen to people, when I talk to people, um, people probably won't notice this, like listeners won't notice this, but I do delete some of the mm -hmm that I do because it sounds like I'm bored or like, oh, really? yeah, like it sounds like I'm uninterested, but it's really just me 
like confirming that I heard you, Mm -hmm. you know? But when I was listening back on it, I was like, man, I sound like I'm bored of this person, but I'm not. I'm like super interested in what they're saying. So I delete the song with them out. (laughs) I have to watch myself like that sometimes too. Mm -hmm. Even, even like Fabian will, like there are a lot of times where he thinks I'm like angry or something, or I don't know, I'm just like blah, (laughs) but I'm really not. I'm like completely and totally fine, but sometimes I just don't sound that way. Yeah, like and I think I get, it's mostly because I'm so comfortable with him that I don't need to animate my emotions yeah, around him. Exactly. Like I get um I get a lot of are you okay? <laughs> you get that a <laughs> lot? Oh my god, how many times have you heard my mom ask me if I'm okay? Yeah, like Or she's always like, Why the long face? Yeah. And I'm just like, I'm fine. <laughs> like, I hear that all the time. Why the long face? Like I hate, um, sometimes Brandon does this, but I hate when he says, are you mad? And then I have to explain to him, I'm mad now because you asked because me you, if I'm mad. Oh, I literally just had this happen the other day, I feel like. I'm like, I'm, okay, now I'm really annoyed because you keep asking me. Yeah. Because I wasn't mad pre prior to this question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so oh, funny. I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. So funny. Oh my god. We ne- we haven't even gotten to what the main thing I was gonna get through. Oh my god. Okay, let's moving on. Um so originally this episode I wanted to, um I found this episode, or this episode, sorry, this article that's, like, titled, or what is it titled? Uh, da, 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 da. Um, is there no title to this? Oh, here. There are 13 spot-on traits of an INTJ personality type. So what I Googled is, how do you spot an INTJ? Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to, like, kind of go down the list and, like, wanted to see if this was accurate or not. Mm-hmm. So the first one is you were a bookworm as a kid, which I think is true for you. Yeah, like it is, but isn't. I rem- I distinctly remember um, when I was really, really young, like just starting school, or maybe I was like, had to have been like first or second grade or something. I remember always having a bunch of books because I was so fascinated by books, but then I always felt like I just didn't have... I didn't want to waste my time reading. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz I felt I felt like it just took too long. So I always had these books and I was always constantly like organizing them on the shelves <laughs> and stuff, like constantly. And I remember Casey's mom coming up to me one day and she was like, "Oh, you must really love to read books, huh?" And I was just like, "Mhm." <laughs> <laughs> and like I would get that all the time. People always thought that I loved to read, but in reality, I really didn't like to read that much. I had a fascination for books, but it was more of like, it was more of like I liked the way they looked and I liked organizing them on shelves. It's so weird, but it wasn't until I think middle school that I actually really started reading a lot. And I think throughout like, (laughs) it was when the Twilight series came out. Mm -hmm. that's That's what made me think of that yeah that's really what like catapulted me into becoming more of like a bookworm I guess you'd say because after that for the next like couple of years I read constantly I would read books all the time but ever since then I haven't really so I guess like I guess that kind of works in some sense but yeah I, I, I don't really ever consider myself an actual bookworm it's like I want to read all these books but I just never actually do it yeah. Or I get through, <laughs> I'm in the middle of, no joke, like five books right now <laughs> that I get halfway through and then I don't finish them. Yeah. Well, the I, thought process, I guess, behind this this statement is that IETJs have a thirst for knowledge. So yeah. They, so the book one part is more like wanting, or wanting to learn something, which that I get because when I did the Myers-Briggs test, Mm-hmm. And I, um, you know how like 16 personalities has all the different articles. 
Yeah. So like the moment I, f- I did the quiz and I got my results and they saw that they had different articles, I literally read every single article and it was like two that's, in the morning. Yeah, that's how I was. And I think uh, one thing I read was that we get really like kind of obsessive mm-hmm. over things. And I think that's what it, I think that's one of the things about me is that I'll get really obsessive over something for, it'll be like a short amount of time whether that's like a few hours or like maybe a few weeks or even like a few months, I'll be Mm -hmm. really immersed in one thing and I'll really like constant, I'll constantly be thinking about it. Or if it's like a project, I'll constantly be working on it. And I always feel like I have to do it all at once. But then like once I feel like I've gotten enough of it or something, I just move on to the next thing because I want to learn something new. Yeah. Oh yeah. I feel the same way. I mean, I don't have any examples right now I could think of, but like yeah. I've, I've done that too. Yeah. And I think that it's like, a, I remember you, you texted me, this was recently, like a couple months ago, you you said something like, good thing you have a, a ton of hobbies. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and I think that's why it's because I keep wanting to learn all these things and then I don't have time for them all but then I'll like do them for a while cause I'll get super obsessive over it and then I'll stop and do the next thing. I know that's why like, like this podcast, um, I feel like it's going to keep going just because mm-hmm. like, even though it's a podcast, like there's so many different things I could learn about or, you know, yeah. maybe topics about, but that's very true. Um, with my other projects. Cause I have, a lot of hobbies too. Like I mm-hmm. did calligraphy and I do crafts and I do like, I tried to pick up watercolor painting. <laughs> I just yeah. had a well, bunch of hobbies. Cause I did, I tried to do watercolor painting and I tried to do calligraphy also. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's like fascinating how, like how much the human can do you know, and like the creativity part of your brain as well. Yeah. Like I really, yeah, <clears throat> too much, too many hobbies, but yeah. So the bookworm thing is just more like thirst for knowledge, which is true. Like I loved, like, that's the thing I loved about college. What I didn't like about college was like doing the work, but I liked learning about stuff. Yeah, I did. I remember actually I did when I wanted to be an astronomer. I was constantly getting books from the line. I totally forgot about that. So I was reading a lot of like books on space and stuff. So I guess, mm-hmm. I guess I could be considered a bookworm. Maybe I just not so much now as an adult because I just really don't have the time for it. But yeah, that makes sense. And I'm, yeah. And I'm constantly like reading things on the internet. Like this morning I was trying to get ready for work, but I got distracted about this or with this article on sunspots. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like sitting there on my bed I have like 10 minutes before I have to leave and I'm reading about sunspots and I still need to get dressed and whatnot <laughs> that's funny because this morning I was reading about the benefits of running barefoot <laughs> <laughs> oh my god such random things well I just like saw it and then I was like oh because I've heard that before you know, yeah. but I never really looked into it. And so I found the article and it talked about, and I just like, um, I just sat in my bed, just re- reading those articles. And I was like, man, what a good insight. Too bad I don't <laughs> run. So. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. So the next one is that we're cynical people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> hundred <laughs> percent maybe okay I think it comes off as cynical but I think we're just being realistic <laughs> yeah well it so it says you pretty much doubt everyone else but yourself and that's kind of <laughs> true to be honest yeah. like I don't I don't know this makes me sound really bad but like uh-huh. not, not like when it comes well when it comes to certain things like in my head I'm thinking I know I could do this better but I need to let you do it oh my god that's the hardest thing about training yeah 
because I, it's weird because I love training. Like I, I, I'm the like only person really that trains people Mm -hmm. or I should be really the only person that trains people at work and stuff. And it gets so hard sometimes because I'm just so used to being able to do things a certain way and I want them done a certain way. And I know it'll just be easier and quicker Mm -hmm. if I just do them. But I'm like, I have to let you do it because you have to learn how to do it. I have to be able to trust you when you're on your own. Mm -hmm. Because that, oh my God, that scares me (laughs) (laughs) so much. The first day a new trainee is by themselves, it freaks me out. But I'm like, they have to do it. Like, They're more capable than I think usually pretty much most of the time. Um, I'm just like that over analyzer, overthinker, like just so nervous. <laughs> and I just want to do things <laughs> myself because I know it'll be done a certain way. Not that it'll be done like better. Uh huh. It's more of like, I want it done a certain way. Yeah. Cause usually like our way is a more efficient streamlined way. Yeah. And like, that's very true with driving. Oh my God. I know you complain about Brandon all the time. (laughs) Because Brandon's very, like, go with the flow. Like, he likes the scenic route, you know, and he likes, and that's great and all. But for me, the way my brain works, like, regardless of whether I have a deadline to me or, like, whatever, Mm -hmm. I'm always thinking, like, what is the best and most efficient way to get from point A to point B? Mm Mm-hmm. And like, it's, <laughs> this is going to make me sound weird, but like after work, when I used to be at work, I mm-hmm. actually do check my Google maps, um, every day after work to see the traffic, oh just to see where it's like, what's the most eff- efficient way to get somewhere. And then yeah. when I moved to this new job, I also mapped out. So I know like, like three or five different ways how to get home or something like that. I think it's like four different ways to get home. So I know that if there's a, so like, (laughs) geez, so like when it rains in Sacramento, I Uh know not to use I-5, (laughs) you know, (laughs) like certain things like that. Like, it's like, okay, it's raining. I'm going to use garden highway. And then if it's like, and then I know exactly like if it's past, like, I think 630, then I can use the freeway or something like that. Uh-huh. Like, and then like in the morning, I know I have to leave by 715 to get on the freeway before traffic. But once I reach 716, it's too late. I got to use the other, the other route. Oh, that's so <laughs> funny. I kind of do that too. Cause I have, I have like two routes um, going home from work. I mean, now I work at two locations, but when I was just working at one, I did have two routes and I would like decide each day, like, okay, which one's going to be faster? Mm -hmm. (laughs) What's going on? Like if the train is coming, I'm going to take this way (laughs) because, oh my God, that is a nightmare. Yeah. I think you've seen some of my stories or Snapchats (laughs) on the stupid train. (laughs) I hate trains. I absolutely hate them. I despise them now living They're just so long. They're so long, and then sometimes they go back and forth, back and forth, and you're like, wait, when is it going to end? Make up your mind. Why are you going two different directions? I don't understand. (laughs) And the same thing with, like, the rain, because it floods so much here. I know where it's going to flood and where I need to avoid, because I don't want to take that extra time to, like, turn around and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I know. I I feel bad being in a car with someone sometimes, or, like... (laughs) Like I, I very much refrain myself from telling people my thoughts because I don't want to seem like a know-it-all. Yeah. You know, like, and, and like, I don't want to seem pompous or whatever. Yeah. But like, there's this one, t- like, I love being reassured that I'm right though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like there's this one time. So me and Michael, we used to work at the same building. Right. Uh-huh. Um, and so we had a meeting downtown and so we had to go from West Sac to downtown. And when um, we left, we both left at the same time and he asked me which way I was going. I was like, Oh, I'm going to use this route. And then he's like, Oh, you are. And I was like, yep. And then he said, okay, well, I was going to use this other route. And I was like, okay. And then in my head, I was like, 
I'm going to get there way earlier than you, but good luck. <laughs> and then I got there 15 minutes earlier. <laughs> oh, and in my head, I wanted to say, I told you so, so bad. Oh my God. I know. I, it's one of my toxic, many toxic traits is that I really, really want to tell people I told you so. Okay. Like yeah. I really love being proved right. Oh, I love it. But you that's know. such a like, <laughs> I've seen that so many like articles and videos I've seen that that's like a trait of INTJs is that you like being right. You just like really love being right. And yeah. it's not that we're like, it's not like we that, have to be right or like, yeah, it's like, we're still open-minded. Mm-hmm. I think that it, it talks about that too in the 16 personalities article. Mm-hmm. We're yeah, like, like we're willing to change if it's more effective. Yes, if like it's not... logical, makes mm-hmm. more sense, then yes, you can change my mind. But mm-hmm. if I think that this certain specific way is more logical and more efficient, then you cannot change my mind. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of times they're validated, you know? We don't just think something's ra- mm-hmm. like more efficient. We know it is because it's, you yeah. know, we've confirmed it, <laughs> so... Oh, that's the worst when people try to fight you on that. And I'm like, no, I know. I know it. <laughs> I know. Cause I tell, <laughs> sounds, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to repeatedly say this sounds bad, but it's not, yeah. <laughs> but I always tell Brandon, like life is so much easier if you just listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Cause it's true. <laughs> Fabian, I feel so bad sometimes because Fabian will be like, he'll ask me like a question like, oh, do you want me to do this? And then I'll be like, no, it's all right. It's fine. You don't need to do that. And then he'll go and do it anyway. And I'm like, why did you do it? I told you you didn't have to do it. And he'll be like, I just know it'll be better for both of us if I just do it. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, oh, (laughs) that makes me sound terrible, but thank you. (laughs) That's funny. Yeah. Oh, okay. And the next one is you don't like rules or tradition. And for me, this is so true because I come from a very religious and traditional Filipino family uh-huh. and I don't agree with a lot of it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I think um, there's like a couple things I think about this because I feel like we can be, I don't know about you really, but I know for me, a lot of people think I'm like a rule follower and I have to follow every rule. Mm -hmm. But, and I, I did find, or I read about this somewhere else too, that other people are like, this is like an INTJ thing is that Mm -hmm. we do love rules, but we're also not afraid to break rules if we think that the rule doesn't have a purpose. Yeah. And that's how I've always felt about rules. And people are are always like, oh, you're such a rule follower. You're a goody two shoes. And I'm like, I mean, yeah, I kind of am. But there are some times where like, if a rule does not make any sense to me, then I I won't care about it. (laughs) Yeah. I won't. Like, I hate the, like, um, there's a lot of things in, I mean, I won't get into religion, but Mm -hmm. there are a lot of stuff where, the explanation is, well, you just do it that way. Oh, and like that's that, just how it is. That is my biggest pet peeve. Uh huh. I hate that. I hate being told it's just because that's the way it is. I hate that. Yeah, like um, so in the Philippines, um, like divorce isn't a thing. Like you can't actually get divorced there. So like my cousin when she moved to America, she legally divorced her husband and married a new guy but then they retired and moved back to the philippines so in the philippines they don't recognize the divorce so technically in the philippines she's still married to her ex-husband and then just living with her new husband like he's just like a roommate or whatever um but it's still like i mean they worked it out like the husband um, transferred uh, like their property over to the new guys and it was like very mutual so it, it worked out for them but like um, in other cases it's not always gonna work out yeah exactly and then like the reason is because you just you don't <laughs> like yeah. you just don't because it's like against I think it's because like it, Catholicism is really big in the Philippines yeah and you, you just don't 
<laughs> I figured I always like, <laughs> I feel like anytime it's something like that, it probably has to do with like religion or something. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's just weird. Like I can't, I can't conform to certain things. Like mm-hmm. I, I just don't understand why we can't do a certain thing just because I don't know, someone a long time ago said we couldn't, (laughs) you know, like, unless there's some rationality behind it, like, I'm just going to do it. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel about (laughs) it. (laughs) And yeah, that's why like, I like at work and oh, I guess just life in general, I do question things a lot. Mm Because I want to know, like, sometimes it sounds like I'm being rude, but Mm -hmm. I legitimately just want to know, like, the thought process behind it Mm -hmm. and why I should do it that way. And if it makes sense, then, yeah, I'll follow the rules. Oh, yeah, that's, (laughs) I, I, not that I get into it with people sometimes, but, like, I know a lot of people are very annoyed by me sometimes because I'm always asking why. Mm -hmm. Like, I have to know. I'm always asking, like, why? Why is it this way? Why do we have to do it that way? I just need to know why. Even if it's, like, the simplest, like, stupidest reason, and I don't really need to know, like, I just, I have to know. (laughs) Yeah. Like, every little detail. Especially when, um, if we make plans to go somewhere or do something or whatever, like, I just, even for something like that, I'm like, why? Why are we going there? (laughs) why'd you order that (laughs) like I just I'm always asking why even though I probably don't need to yeah but for me I just like need to know I think um I think I annoyed Joanne once (laughs) (laughs) because um the same thing like I think it was like at your bachelorette and we were playing some type of game and I asked her what game is it what do you do and like you know, I kept asking her um <laughs> I question, remember this. and she's like it's a game <laughs> I, was yeah. like, okay. <laughs> I was like my bad <laughs> I was like I just want to know if it's a type of game I want to play yeah <laughs> and it ended up not being so you know Worked out for me. <laughs> Probably has to do with the fact that we just constantly need to be prepared for everything. <laughs> yeah, which leads to the next one. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> yeah, because it says you're always a step ahead, and it's it talks about basically you're always ahead of the game because you have to always maintain control, so uh, which makes us like planners, basically, which is completely true. <laughs> oh, my God. I know. Everyone knows me as like this, like – super planner super organized like I have to write out every second of my day Mm -hmm. I have to have a plan for everything yeah and then for the longest time I don't know if you still do this but like I used to have the you know physical planner oh yeah I buy one every single year I buy them customized Mia I pay like 60 dollars for my planners (laughs) Oh yeah, me too. I've had different kinds too because I've tried out different kinds. Like I've had the Erin Condren, I've had the Inkwell, uh-huh. the Emily Lee, like the simplified mm-hmm. one. I've had like just your basic Target one. That one sucked. Mm-hmm. Um, what else have I had? I so actually kind of like the tar- like the Blue Sky Target ones. Well, the one I had was too small. <laughs> oh and then, oh yeah like, I've gone through so many different sizes trying to figure out which one I like best because mm-hmm. it's like the small ones what I ended up doing is just putting a bunch of post-it notes in it because there wasn't enough room for everything <laughs> so I know it sucked yeah I, I did burnt the full, that one I, I did the full size one last year and then I decided to get one that wasn't like the mini planner but it was like halfway Mm-hmm. It's like a weird in between size, maybe like a notebook size, I guess. And like an A five. Yeah, I think that's what it is. And it's just like it's too small now. I can't fit everything I need to fit in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I wish I kept my college planner because it, man, that thing was thick because they had so much like post-it notes on it but oh I was just God. so that year was just so hard. I wanted to forget about it, so I burned it. <laughs> I've kept every single one of my planners, every single one. 
Yeah, I have all of mine now, but I uh, I was like, man, this is getting too expensive. So I switched everything to electronic and I have like, so I use my Google calendar and oh. I even, um, and I put everything on my Google calendar. I'm like even, <laughs> I even put like, and it's all color coded and I even put like mm-hmm. when I'm going to visit my mom, because, okay. I don't know if you're going to like resonate with this, Mm -hmm. but the reason why I document everything um, on my Google calendar, like where I'm at, I even put like the location and stuff like that um, is because if I was ever in a situation where you disappeared, no, where someone tried to frame me for murder, (laughs) I will have an alibi. (laughs) I think about that too. (laughs) So I'll be like, oh, September 15th, Here, let me check my calendar. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is where I was. I think about that. Or if I, for some reason, got kidnapped or something, mm-hmm. then someone could look at my planner and know exactly where I was at a specific time. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point, too. <laughs> oh, we're so weird. <laughs> You got to think ahead, you know? That's why we're always ahead of the game. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And that, like, that controlling part, too, of it, Mm -hmm. as much as I don't want that to be me, I've realized recently, even before um, I did the Myers-Briggs test, Mm -hmm. I've begun to realize that I am a bit controlling. Because we've had situations where, like, um, I'll have my day completely planned out or like Fabian and I will make plans for a day or something. Mm-hmm. And then one slight difference will make me just like go insane. Like I will freak out and I've had it happen a couple of times and I'm like, why is this affecting me so much? It'll be something like, oh, instead of going to dinner at six o'clock, we have to go at six 30 and yeah. it would be something minuscule like that. And I'll just like freak out. Yeah. I'm like, I can't do it. I can't. <laughs> yeah, sometimes he, I'll just shut down. Yeah, and then I'll see, like, I'll see on his face, he's like, well, why are you being so crazy? Like, I don't understand. This isn't, this isn't, like, It's not a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. And I realized, oh, that's a bit controlling. Yeah, I'm trying to work on that. Yeah, me too. It's that's hard. Really hard. <laughs> And, like, because – so I'm trying to be very careful, too, like, how I talk to people. Mm-hmm. Um, like, for example, when um, I hang out with Bailey and Casey, mm-hmm. like, sometimes it's – sometimes it's hard because I have a million questions. Like, I, I want to know what day, what time, where we're going, mm-hmm. what we're doing. Um, are we driving together? Are we driving separately? Are we meeting at yeah. the place? Are we meeting at, you know, at someone's house? And like, but I don't want to ask all those questions at the same time. Oh, I, I'm the same way. But then when they don't respond right away or they're like, well, uh, what do you want to do? Or like, if there's no straight answer, it makes me livid. <laughs> I'm just oh like, my God, pick I an know. answer. <laughs> That's just, why I try. Um, I've learned to not ask people more than one question at a time because Mm -hmm. I've noticed that they don't answer them all. Yeah, exactly. Like you can't, you can't put it all in one text. No, they only answer the last question. Yeah. It's happened so many times and it makes me so mad. I'm like, do you not read the text? (laughs) (laughs) Do you not read the whole thing? Just (laughs) apparently people don't. And yeah, it's just so it frustrating. So mad. I'm like, I shouldn't be this mad. <laughs> yeah, because it's so stupid. Like, it's so trivial, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, it's not anything to be worth yeah. or be mad about. But, like, I think I also want to know right away so I can put it in my planner. Oh, yeah. If I, um, <laughs> I hate having like half plans made. Uh huh. Like, like, I know incomplete. we're going, yeah, I know we're going somewhere, but I don't know what time. And I hate uh-huh. writing like, oh, we're doing this at blank. And yeah. I'm like, I need a time. I need to put a time in there. <laughs> yeah. And that's especially hard um, because like, so the Google Calendar in my like, um, I think it's the Simplified or one of the planners I had was time-based. I think it's the Simplified one. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And so when someone doesn't give me the time, I like freak out because I'm like, don't know how the hell do it. I put this in my planner? Yes. <laughs> That's why I've actually, I've, I've never gotten the planners that have the times on them because I'm so afraid of that happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's kind of difficult. Yeah, like I have I to put other, it as all day. Yeah. Cause I know other people aren't as like anal. As me yeah. <laughs> Especially like Fabian's the complete opposite of me basically with this kind of stuff. So I've had to learn, I've had to force myself to learn to not be so crazy about uh-huh. these things, especially when it comes to things that we're doing together. Yeah. So he is very much the type of person where like, obviously he's okay with plans changing and he doesn't try too hard to make things fit in a certain like time frame or mm-hmm. I don't know. Like he does like having set specific times, but it also kind of depends on what it is too. Yeah. There's like not, mm-hmm. he doesn't need to be super structured. Yeah. And he doesn't, he doesn't need to know like right away. I need to know right away. Mm-hmm. But he can wait until like day before or day of. Oh, that makes me so mad. <laughs> I know. And I've, I've, I think I've been better about not asking right away because he'll be like, hey, um, like just recently, he was like, hey, we're going to go hiking on Sunday with so-and-so. And in my head, I'm, I want to be like, okay, what time? Who's going? Where are we going? Like, how are we getting there? Are we carpooling? Like, <laughs> yeah, I want to ask all those questions. But now I've learned to just like, be like, okay, <laughs> like you're going to handle this. Mm-hmm. I'll find out like maybe the day before I'll start asking these questions. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's the same for Brandon because we try to like schedule something like Joanne tried to schedule a dinner and then um, I'll just be like, okay, well, Joanne asked me, you know, what's a great time for dinner. And then like, I'll wait a couple days and like, oh, don't forget. We're going to have dinner. <laughs> Cause, and, and then we'll find out like, and then I have to like be really on him too. Cause it's like, okay, the moment you say yes, that means we have to go. And this is how, when, where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we're so crazy. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I live a pretty happy life though. <laughs> <laughs> right. It, it makes me really happy when things are automatically set that way Mm -hmm. (laughs) you just know when everything is and what's going on like I I definitely do want to change that aspect though because like even today because you know we were supposed to start at one o'clock but then Mm -hmm. Brandon wanted to go get lunch and I was like okay because he said he was coming home early but Mm -hmm. then he um got stuck in traffic and so luckily like you were going to be late too so like okay 1 30 and then 1 30 was like approaching and then I started freaking out and then (laughs) yeah and then I got I got I finally got our food and then um Brandon's like, oh, uh, I wanted to stop by Bevmo. And in my head, I was like, no, we have to go home. But yeah. I, externally, I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> your, like, I'm your trying. ability to hide your emotion right there. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to be like calm and collective because like what I, because I know Brandon too. And like in his head, if I were to say something, he would probably be like, well, it's not the end of the world if you don't meet up at exactly 1 30 yeah you know like if you don't start the podcast at exactly 1 30 like yeah. nothing's gonna go wrong there's no impact to your life whatsoever <laughs> but in my head I was like that's the time we said <laughs> <laughs> it is nice to hear that from another person though because like I'll forget that it really doesn't matter <laughs> yeah and it's just me being me mm-hmm. and it's it's like it's not it really isn't the end of the world it's not going to change much yeah like I feel like our husbands kind of bring us back down to earth you know like we're, <laughs> yeah. we're flying a little too far away and they just like you know slowly bring us back down yeah so because they have don't they have similar um what's Phoebe again uh I don't remember. I, I didn't look into similar. it too much because he's not really into it. And so he's like super weird about it. But I don't, I don't remember off the top of my head what it is. Okay. Funny think- thing is though, I was looking up like compatibilities 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's on the list that is really not compatible with INTJs. Oh, really? Yeah, it's so That's funny. funny. Which I can kind of understand because we are so opposite in a mm-hmm. lot of ways. Hmm. And I could see like why that would be. But at the same time, it's also kind of beneficial because a lot of the traits that are like considered INTG that I don't like about myself, he kind of helps me. Mm-hmm. get out of it and kind of change it a little bit yeah as much as you can be changed that makes me kind of curious then about Brandon's personality because it is pretty d- different from mine like mm-hmm. when I was reading it um but it's kind of the same thing like what you're saying that they kind of help you with those certain traits that you don't like like Brandon definitely throughout the years have helped me like understand people's emotions and why they feel a certain way and how, how you should react to it. Yeah. Um, like the proper way to react to it. So that like really helps, but I think they are pretty yeah. similar, which makes sense. Mm-hmm. Actually. What is, what is Brandon again? Um, I think he's like the ISTP or IS. Uh, I think, I think maybe it actually is along those lines. Oh, yeah. So Brandon's an ISTPT. So yeah, I know he's they're the not exactly the same, but I, th- I think, I think, I think they're only off ones. by like one letter because I think he's like ISFP or something like that. Oh, yeah. Because the TP, those are more of like the thinking. And then isn't the FP more of like feeling or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember. That makes sense. But the, <laughs> the true like pairs for INTJ is. ENFP or ENTP and I found out that Erica is actually an ENFP oh funny yeah so that makes total and complete sense because so I what is it an EN so what fast. ENFP ENFP or, 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 TP. or TP yeah ENFP, ENFP. isn't that what Joanne is no she's an ENFJ Oh, J. Oh, P. Yeah. Okay. P is prospecting. Okay. Huh. That makes me kind of curious then. I want Bailey and Casey to do theirs. I know. I can't wait to find out what theirs is. Yeah. Definitely starts with an E. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Never, I, actually, Bailey might be. Uh, she'll probably still be an E. She'll be an E. Do you have your like percentages? Yeah. So this kind of, <laughs> so for the introvert part, I'm 96%. <laughs> that's not surprising mine is 88 percent yeah that makes sense introverted yeah which i i can agree with yeah because i can spend a lot of time by myself mm-hmm. and i get very tired very fast mm-hmm. yeah around people like um yeah, I do too, but i feel like i do have a slightly more tolerance or a yeah tolerance i think so do. too because like we were video chatting with my nephew with joseph and we didn't video chat for that long. I think maybe maybe an hour, actually. And right after that, I was exhausted. Like, <laughs> I wanted to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Just something about, like, even these, like, interviews are very exhausting. Mm-hmm. That's why sometimes it takes me a long time to edit them. Because, like, when I do a solo one, like, it's easy. I do it, edit it, and then I post it. Yeah. But these other ones, like, it takes me a while. Like, I have to, like, step away from it, take a break, and then just oh, listening yeah. to it is, like, a social activity. <laughs> That's, yeah. <laughs> I totally feel that. <laughs> Let's see. I um, think for the next trait is energy. So that's the the second letter. So the N or the, what is it? What's opposite N? T- wait, what? S, N or S, right? I I think so. I don't know. Done? There's like, I don't know what all of them are. Yeah. But I'm like, I'm 62% intuitive, 38% observant. I got, uh, oh, is that this mine? Yeah. <laughs> I got 62% for intuitive. Is that what you said? Oh, yeah. That's exactly what I got. Yeah. So thinking and judging, I did, it's, um, kind of fairly in the middle though it's at 58 percent for both of those and like assertive is 51 percent but to be honest like in real life I'm pretty assertive 
So I don't yeah. know. But um, granted, I did take this quiz at like two in the morning. <laughs> so I may not like fully understand, like understood what I read. Yeah. I think mine, <laughs> mine is no doubt. I'm 78% turbulent. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's where I get that T from. Yeah. Which I'm not surprised at all about. And then for like judging and prospecting. So this trait reflects our approach to work, planning, and decision making. I'm 64% judging, Mm -hmm. 36% prospecting. By the way, judging does not mean judgmental. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Let's make that clear. When I was reading this, I was like, man, I don't think I was that judgmental. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I know. I had to read that too. But yeah, it doesn't mean judgmental. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Nature, this trait determines how we make decisions and cope with emotions. So that's where the T comes from, like our emotional standpoint. Oh, thinking. Yeah, mine's 64% thinking, which makes sense. 36% feeling. So feeling would be like the emotional part, thinking Mm -hmm. is like the logical part. Mm hmm. So I do tend to put, I try, I notice that I do, I try to put logic first Mm -hmm. over my emotions. And it's really hard because I always, I always have this like big internal conflict with certain situations where like I want, I want something because I want it, but Mm -hmm. I know logically I shouldn't have it. And so I'm like constantly fighting and I'm like, oh, but maybe I should just, I should just have it because I want it. But then I'm like, logically, that doesn't make sense. So I can't. And so I'm fighting with myself. And most of the time, I'll pick like the more logical route. Yeah. Like, especially when it comes to like money. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. When I want to buy something and I'm like, oh, I really, really want this. But then I'm always like, do I need it? No, yeah. I don't need it. So I probably shouldn't get it. And I like do this back and forth forth back and forth back and forth for sometimes it'll last for like days <laughs> it's really bad and then finally in the end I almost always choose not to buy it because I'm like logically I shouldn't be spending money on that yeah I have like a whole slew of stuff that I want to buy and mm-hmm. it's like just the list that I have and I will I will visit it every once in a while but mm-hmm. I wouldn't I never buy anything I know I have a list that's been going forever. I have like vinyls that I've been wanting to buy since like 2014 or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and I just never did because I feel so guilty about spending money on something like that. Yeah. And it's, I feel like there's also a cultural aspect to it too, because mm-hmm. I mean, I guess you can argue that it's still thinking, but there's times where I think, well, it's not logical, but then Um, it would make someone happy to do it. But Mm -hmm. then I was thinking, but that's a logical thing to do because in the long run, it'll like, it would be better for your relationship. Yeah. Make life easier and better. Yeah. So it's still a logical thing, but I don't know. (laughs) It's difficult. I've I've been there so many times. Um, Okay. You want to go to another one? Oh yeah. point. Let's see. So we kind of already went over the, you think with your head, not with your heart one. Yeah. <laughs> um, you keep it real. So lies and small talk are not your thing. You appreciate truth and authenticity. You're deep, reflective, and highly intelli- intelligent. Uh, and you only ask for others to reciprocate the honesty you give them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I hope that's true for everyone that they don't yeah. like to lie. That's <laughs> <laughs> <It's> true. <laughs> I, I am a really bad liar. I am too. I cannot do it. Yeah. I I feel immediately guilty. Like I just I don't know how to do it. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I don't games, know how. When we play this one game that almost like kind of requires you to lie, it's a card game. Mm-hmm. And I'm surprisingly really good at it. (laughs) Peyton gets so mad because he's like, he's always like, you can't lie. You tell me all the time. You don't know how to lie and you can't lie. But then in this game, I lie constantly and I win a lot (laughs) because I do. (laughs) 
And for some reason in this game, I can do it really well, but in real life, mm -mm, I don't even try. I guess that makes sense because you're playing, you're essentially playing a character, right? True. It's, you have, you are two characters. Oh, really? What game is this? It's called Coup. It's a card game. It's really great. I'll have to bring it next time or something. Okay. But everyone loves it every time we bring it somewhere. But you're, you start out as like two characters and you're basically trying to kill off everyone's characters. Mm. And each character has a specific like, um, what's it called? Effect, basically. And you can lie about who you are. And so you can kind of take on other characters' effects and use those to your advantage. Okay. Yeah, I want to play that. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> it's Any, anyways. Yeah. Um, okay, so this next one, I... Hmm, I don't know. It says you know what you want. But I'm oh. a pretty indecisive person. I am well, too. I've seen that a lot in like that INTJ articles. I guess it depends like, on what it is. Yeah. There are times where I'm like, yeah, I know what I, I want to do. Like, like in terms of planning things, mm -hmm. usually like as soon as we have something set, we know that's what we want. But yeah, I can be very indecisive. Yeah, me too. I mean, I, I feel like there I can be both like ex like extremely decisive and extremely mm -hmm. indecisive because when it comes to like um uh, like uh, for like gifts for example like I know exactly what I want like the color and like the type oh, and stuff cuz yeah. I don't really like when people buy me gifts cuz a lot of times they don't know I like what that I too. want it makes me feel so it makes me seem really ungrateful mhm mm and I feel like I'm being ungrateful but I'm mm -hmm. the same way like I think it's just us being particular yeah and I yeah. guess that goes hand in hand with the you know what you want yeah I guess I guess because I am a very very we, I think we talked about this last time uh-huh about how particular I am yeah and you you can be pretty particular too because mm -hmm. people know like people know my favorite color is like fuchsia but it has um, to be a specific. It's a specific shade of fuchsia. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it can't be too, it can't have too many red hues, but you can't have too many like purple hues. Like yeah. it's a specific shade. And then like when it comes to clothes, like people know I kind of like neutral in like earth tones, but it's like specific, you know, yeah. like. <laughs> I, <laughs> this is why I hate when people ask me what my favorite color is. Yeah. <laughs> Because I can't answer that question. It, it depends on what it is. Yeah. Because I am so particular, and it has to be specific shades for specific things. Yeah, exactly. It's specific to what it is. Like, my favorite color is fuchsia. Yeah, sure. But I don't ever wear it. I would never wear fuchsia. It's too <laughs> loud. It's too yeah. bright, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but I love fuchsia things, you know, like a yeah. water bottle or, like... Yeah, whenever <laughs> um, whenever people ask me that question, I end up just saying blue, but that's oh, kind of yeah. a lie. <laughs> <laughs> like I really, I really love like a specific type of blue. Mm -hmm. Like it has to be like that watery, like aqua kind of tealish blue. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's not those. <laughs> <laughs> but then at the same time, I wouldn't ever wear that. Yeah. And it's like certain things I like in that color. Yeah. And I'm the same way with clothes. Like usually it's neutral tones and there's, I love burgundy, but it's mm -hmm. a specific type of burgundy. Like sometimes burgundy is too purple and sometimes it's too bright. Yeah. It's gotta so, be like crimson, like, like <laughs> blood like. Yeah. <laughs> that deep, that deep, like deep red I yeah because sometimes it looks like red wine but I don't like red wine because it's too uh -huh. purple yes yeah exactly. I get you <laughs> <laughs> this conversation is probably so boring to other people <laughs> well it might be fascinating to like INTJs because then they're probably like yes that's yeah. exactly how I feel this is why we have such a hard time with other people yeah so it'll be interesting to see 
if like other people find this interesting or maybe if I'll get like INTJ listeners. Yeah. Or something. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> All right. What's the next thing? Uh, you're self-confident. Mm, um, it depends on if you're an A or a T. <laughs> well, it says, you know, that when you're right, you're really right. And that's that. Uh, Which we kind of we talked about earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I can be that mm-hmm. way. Because I am pretty, like, that's, um, I am, like, a self-conscious person, and I did, I don't want to say suffered from low self-esteem, but I guess, like, Mm -hmm. that's kind of, I don't know how else to say that, but I do, um, I did have to work on that, and that's, like, but I, what I am very confident about is my intelligence, and I tell Mm -hmm. people that I'm not trying to be, like, narcissistic or anything like that, but I hate when people tell me how to do things or how I should do things or whatever, Mm -hmm. because I am smart. Like, I'm not stupid, and I don't like when people think I'm stupid. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Other than that, like, everything else, I know I have a bunch of flaws, but that one aspect of me, um, I do, like, I am proud of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes, I don't know, it kind of, for me, like, I can feel that way sometimes, but then, like, I remember in high school, I never, even though I was in, like, the higher level classes, I was always taking Mm -hmm. AP honors, blah, 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 and everyone's like, oh my god, Leah, you're so smart, but then to me, I didn't really have confidence in my intelligence, even though technically on paper, yes, you can call me smart. Mm -hmm. But, like, being around, like, that group of people, I felt like I was on the lower end of the smart people. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, I always felt so inadequate next to my friends who were, like, scoring 100% on all their tests. And then there's me, like, I feel like I had to struggle and I was just constantly asking them questions. Like, I don't know, it felt like such a struggle to me. But then I look at other people and they, it's just a breeze for them. Mm Mm-hmm. And that always kind of, like, kind of hurt my self-confidence a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well. But I think as I get older, it gets a little bit better. Yeah. And, like, I don't really think of. So, I guess that's why I think I'm intelligent. Is that I don't think of book smarts as necessarily as intelligent. Mm-hmm. Because, like, because um, there's more to life than that. Like, if we abolish schools in general like what really makes you intelligent is not knowing like when we signed the like declaration of independence, what makes you intelligent is like your ability to assess a situation. Mm -hmm. And now I have a brain fart. (laughs) Like analyze a situation and yeah. And come up with like a solution. It's critical thinking. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it was. That's why I like portal or like puzzle games. Oh. Oh my God. Yeah. There's a lot of critical thinking. I do like, love puzzles. <laughs> um, like, I really love game shows. <laughs> yeah. Like, the Game Show Network, I l- used to love watching that with I, my dad when I was I watching. love and hate them. Like, I really like them, but then I get so irritated with the contestants sometimes. Mm-hmm. Because I'm like, just do it this way. <laughs> <laughs> I love the ones where you can play with them and then, like, uh, we <laughs> we spent, like, last night watching Jeopardy because it's on Hulu. Oh, my God. I love Jeopardy. I know. It's – and, like, you get to learn at the same time, yeah. you know? I remember I, <laughs> I was at our friend Courtney's house, and I think Erica was there and maybe a couple other people. And for some reason, we're all like drinking and stuff. And for some reason, I had the urge, we put on Jeopardy. I don't know why. We put on Jeopardy and I specifically looked up Jeopardy on like anatomy and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I never felt so smart in my life because (laughs) I was getting all these Jeopardy questions right. Because I just love anatomy and whatnot. And it's just so funny watching, like, their faces. They're like, how do you know all these? And I'm like, well, I did just take a class on it, so. Yeah. I know there's this one. It was, like, medical acronyms. And then one of the ladies was, um, she was a practicing, uh, practicing, practitioner. And there was one that she didn't get, but I got. And I was like, you are call yourself a doctor? (laughs) How did you miss this one? Oh my god! Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> it is. I was like, "Ooh, mm-mm. you should have done that." 
<laughs> now all your patients are like questioning you. Oh God. <laughs> uh, okay. So the next one is you're open-minded, which I feel like we talked about earlier. Yeah, we did talk about that one. But it says like, despite yourself, your high self-confidence, you're receptive to ideas and opinion, opinions outside your own because you're so rational. You consider all possibilities with an open mind. And yeah. um yeah, which is true. I mean, we talked about that earlier that even though we think what we um what we do is more efficient and it's better and we're very confident in it, we are we're confident in it because we validated it. It's validated, mm-hmm. it's confirmed, it's you know, we yeah. tested it out. You know it works. Yeah. And so and if, like if there's a better way to do something, then yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm always open to improvement and like Um, like at work, we actually, it's, um, if anyone's in it or project management, there's like the area of process improvement. And so I'm always up and like ready for more process improvement. I love that aspect of like project management. And I think it's like, so important, like it's such an important area of work in general. Yeah. So I feel like I've, I've done that a lot with my job too. Like um, like with the, the training at the salon, I mm-hmm. put together like a whole training packet because I thought it would be more efficient to help train people. Mm-hmm. So I like did all this extra stuff because I wanted it to be easier and quicker and just more comprehensive, I guess. I did the exact same thing at work too, because <laughs> we have a new person. And so when I started work this this uh January we didn't have any training materials there was no job aids there was no like uh-huh. um to-do list like there was nothing so like uh me and my coworker, um I kind of wonder if she's an INTJ but uh that's a different <laughs> subject um but we both like created a checklist of exactly what you need to do your trainings what documents you need to sign all that stuff and we made job aids and the job aids are meant for like to literally throw at anybody and anyone can do it. Like even yeah. an intern can come in and follow the step by step and be able to do it. Yeah. Those are so much fun to make. Yeah. <laughs> so we made like a whole, like we made all the job aids, all the checklists. And um, I even like planned out her training agenda, like her schedule. And then my <laughs> boss is like, thanks. <laughs> I love the little training packet I put together. <laughs> you know, I wish I kept, because I made, like, we called it the Bible, and yeah. it was in my last project, and I wish I kept it because it was a it was a binder, and it was color-coded, and it had the different tabs, and I had them, <laughs> like, um, organized by, like, daily, weekly, monthly, and ad hoc, like, task, and all that stuff. It was very, it was very pretty. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's nice. fun. <laughs> It's very Monica. Ooh, do you think Monica's a nine, TJ? Oh, she. I don't. Oh, she, I feel like she. She could be. Oh, maybe she is. Hmm. She's definitely got that like organization and. But she's very like expressive. Yeah, she is. I feel like she's more like way too emotional. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think so too, but um, definitely like the organizational part of her. <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. Oh, I love Friends. Such a good show. Maybe she's like an INFJ, or oh. maybe an ENFJ. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So like a di. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think Joanne would ever go on the podcast? Do you think she'd want to? I think she would. Okay. Joanne's our, is Leia's older sister. Yes. I also refer to her as Ate. Yeah. So if you're Filipino, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> but Ate <laughs> is just like, Ate means sister, but you call like you. Your elders. Yeah. You call it your elders. elders. Yeah. Whatever. It's difficult. That's just <laughs> too many traditions. <laughs> Okay, next one is, um, well, we kind of talked about this already, but you have difficulty expressing your emotions. Oh, yeah, we had a whole thing about that. Yeah, so let's skip that. You're a hard worker. That's true. 
Yeah, I think so. I'm not lazy. I mean, I am, but I'm not. Like, when it comes to school and stuff, I mm-hmm. am a hard worker. And, like, work, I feel like I am. But then at home, I'm not always. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. get tired, man. Yeah, me too. But, like, once I get started on something, I'm like a steamboat. Yeah, it's hard to stop. I don't know if that's the if right I, word for it. I, feel like, I know what you mean, though. That's, that's a good way to put it, because I feel like once I stop, it's really hard to get going again. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, a, aren't steamboats, like, powered by coal? hmm So, like, it takes a lot to get started, but once you're yeah. started... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it doesn't stop. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, you're independent. So you're highly self-sufficient and don't rely on anyone else. <laughs> I, that's one of my biggest things, actually. It yeah. Like, ever since I was a kid, I've always just wanted to be as independent as possible. I mean, I'm not always because it's really hard for anyone to be super independent. But mm-hmm. that's one of my big things that I'm like, I have to be independent. I have to make my own money. I have to, like, I always have to have a job. Mm -hmm. I always have to have like a backup plan. I always have to be able to take care of myself. Yeah, I agree. I'm exactly the same way. Like Mm -hmm. I was actually talking to my mom about it and she said that I've always been very independent, even like when I was a baby, (laughs) because she was saying like I started walking early, I guess. Uh And then um, like when I started preschool, I didn't want her to hold my hand. (laughs) <laughs> like she told, like she told me this story like the other day like I didn't want her to hold my hand I didn't want her to like basically like shadow me or anything like I kind of wanted yeah. to do things on my own and um I always walked on my own I guess because yeah. like she was always holding my brother's hand and like like when we crossed the street or something like that and I always wanted to be on my own and it makes sense because I left at 18 you know, I got my car and I got my own job and I did everything like pretty much on my own. Obviously with like some help here and there. Cause that yeah. obviously before you're 18, you can't really do everything on your own. Yeah. But for the most part, I was pretty independent. Yeah. I think I, I was pretty, I, as a kid, I don't, I was kind of independent. I was also very scared of a lot of things and I was very shy. So it made it hard to be independent, but I always mm-hmm. wanted to be. And I never like, I think it's part of, being an introvert too is that a lot of my memories as a kid are of me being alone and just like playing by myself or something or just doing something on my own Mm -hmm. like a lot of my memories are of that yeah (laughs) I rarely think of like whenever I was with a group of people or anything like that it's like those kind of go they can go hand in hand yeah I don't really I don't remember my childhood too much, <laughs> to be honest. About it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I have always wanted to be independent. And, like, if anything was to happen to Brandon, um, if he died or whatever, uh-huh. I, like, I would probably end up just being alone. Like, I probably just want to live by myself, mm-hmm. like, That's in my own I place. About too, is, like, if something bad were ever to happen, hopefully never Mm-hmm. But that's how I imagine my life going, too. Is that <laughs> It sounds really bad, but even as a kid, actually, I always, I never really thought that I would, like, get married or do anything like that. I thought I would, I always just had it in my head that I was going to be alone mm-hmm. with animals, and that's it. Yeah, but not, like, in a sad way. <laughs> yeah, it never made me sad or depressed to think yeah. about it that way. Because I always hear, like, in movies or TV shows, like, like the insult is, I hope you grow old alone. And in my head, I was like, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's not a big problem. <laughs> yeah. I always thought that's such a weird insult. Yeah. Like, it's like, okay. And? <laughs> okay. So this is the last one. And. I'm really glad this is the last one on the list, actually, because I think it's pretty funny because we kind of touched on it earlier. Uh So another characteristic of an INTJ is that we have dark sense of humor. (laughs) I think that's my favorite one. 
Yeah. <laughs> actually, because I hear that a lot about mm-hmm. INTJs too. And I'm like, ah, oh, okay. I'm not that weird then. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. I have to like be careful too, though. Cause I uh, think yeah. I accidentally said a joke. I forgot what the joke was, but like, it was really bad because the person just died. Oh. And then. I accidentally said this joke and I can't remember what it was. It wasn't like bad. Like it wasn't bad against the person. Like it wasn't negative towards the person or anything, but it was just kind of funny. I think it's like the way the person died or something like that. Yeah. But in my head, it was like hilarious. And I had to like refrain from laughing. Oh my God. (laughs) And I was like, oh, okay. I need to, I need to watch myself. Yeah. I've (laughs) definitely (laughs) been there. And there are a lot of things that I know I, should not say it loud. And I even like feel bad myself for thinking them. I'm like, why? <laughs> why did you go there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, it's okay. It says you have a very sarcastic and dark sense of humor that not everybody can handle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're definitely way worse than me when it comes to sarcasm, too. Am I? <laughs> I think so. I, I can be that was sarcastic. sarcastic. Oh, oh my God. See? <laughs> I'm so bad at detecting sarcasm too. I use it all the time, but I can't detect it. It's, <laughs> it's terrible. I'm just like, oh, what? Really? I know. I, um, that's one of our ground rules at work. See, I feel like people in IT are... They're very similar to INTJ people mm-hmm. in general. Makes but, sense. like, one of our ground rules is no, no sarcasm. Because <laughs> it offends people. <laughs> yeah. Because we have to always be careful in the meetings not to be sarcastic because it's unprofessional. Yeah. Or whatever. I just thought that was so funny. <laughs> but, yeah. Make a whole rule on it. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with sarcasm every once in a while. It's just it's a sign of intelligence. It really is, though, because some people don't get me. <laughs> what an INTJ thing to say. <laughs> oh, so funny. I know. I I will never forget this. The essay. Did it, I'm pretty sure I told you. I, I think I told everybody. Mm-hmm. But that English essay I had. When they, the oh, prof- your yeah. professor is like too much sarcasm. Yeah. So I, I may have said this in the previous episode. I don't remember, but in case you guys didn't hear that story, uh, basically in college, in my English class, the teacher or the professor asked us to write an essay in our own persona. So like our own personal <laughs> persona, like who we are. She asked <laughs> us to write in our own voice. Okay. And I got points taken off because it was too sarcastic. Oh, my God. I think I kept that paper. I have to look for it somewhere. That's so insulting. You got points taken off for the person you are. Yeah. I mean, I still got an A, but still, I probably could have gotten 100. Oh, (laughs) that makes me so mad. Yeah. I was like, are you serious? I didn't fight it at the time. Yeah. I was like livid. I like told all my friends, I was like, do you see this crap right here? <laughs> Why am I even in college? Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> it is. I was like, don't tell me to talk in my own voice and then knock me down for it. Yeah. <laughs> I need to read that paper because I don't, when I wrote it, I don't remember it being sarcastic. <laughs> so. Probably because it's your own voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's funny because uh, so in, in high school, do you remember Mr. Um, uh, what's his? Oh, Webster, duh, dictionary. I love um, him. Yeah, so I had to write a letter or I had to write an essay, and the essay was because I had my phone out. And so, as punishment, he told me to write an essay mm-hmm. about why I shouldn't have my phone out during testing because I think it was like during star testing or something like that. <laughs> And then the reason why I had my phone out is because I finished before everybody and I was bored. So <laughs> I was on my phone. Um, however, sh- is his name Sean? I don't remember his name, but he was like one of the soccer players. You know, Mr. Webster's like really into soccer. Yeah. 
Um, so he had his phone out too. So in my S, but he didn't get asked to write an essay. Like, I don't know if he got caught or not. Um, yeah. But in my essays, I think I wrote something along the lines with, you know, it's really funny that I have to write this essay considering the other soccer player within the class also had his um, phone out. However, he wasn't asked to write an essay. Well, that's okay because I'll still write this essay anyways because I'm a good student. And, <laughs> and he loved it. He ate it up. He like laughed when he read it. And he said, this is a really good essay. You're a good writer. Oh my God. <laughs> I love him so much. He was such a great... It's funny because I was just about to bring up um, an essay that I had to write for him too. Mm -hmm. And he told us to write it in the voice of this character. I can't for the life of me think of what the book is. It's a really famous book. Um, And the character, like the main character is very sarcastic. Mm -hmm. And I remember, because I hate English. I hate writing. Always (laughs) have hated it. But that I think is the best thing I've ever written in my life because it was just writing in this character's voice who's extremely sarcastic. And I got to be like, so it's like, it it does sound kind of unprofessional and you kind of get to write it. I I felt like I was writing it just the way I was. (laughs) And it was just my thoughts and they weren't like, it wasn't bad to be writing the way I wanted to write. Yeah. And it was just so easy. It was the easiest thing I'd ever written. I'm pretty sure I got an A on it. And I even read it um, just like a couple of years ago or something. I found it on my computer and I read it and I was like, wow, this is actually a really good essay. And I've (laughs) never felt that way about any of my writing. Dang. That makes me want to go look for that essay if I still have it. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is like before cloud, like the cloud stuff, you Mm -hmm. know? So it's all like hard copies and I don't know if I kept all of them. Yeah. Man, if only we had technology back then. <laughs> I mean, we did, but I don't know not what like happened now. to it. Yeah, not like now. Like, but, oh well. Anyways, that is the list. That is like, oh, I mean, I did find another one, but it's pretty much just the same thing. Yeah. But the one thing I forgot that I wanted to point it out, but I guess INTJs are also known for their resting bitch faces. <laughs> Oh, man. If uh, you guys yeah. only knew. I feel, I, like, oh, I feel like I'm, I don't really have one, but then I have had instances where people have told me that I look scary or mean or unapproachable. But then at the same time, people do approach me all the time. So, Yeah, I've gotten um, people Weird. tell me I'm intimidating. Mm-hmm. And honestly, that makes me feel really good. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that's really a bad thing. Yeah, like, I'm like, yeah, fear me. (laughs) (laughs) Even though you're not fearful at all. No, I'm a little weakling. I can't punch you or anything. (laughs) Like, I'll probably grab a pen and stab you or something. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) I have no upper body strength. Um, But, yeah, I just thought that was funny because, I mean, that kind of goes back to earlier when we were saying how people always ask us if we're okay. Yeah. (laughs) That's true. So maybe it's not like resting bitch face. Well, I think for me, it's like resting worried face or something like that. Or Um, sad face. Like I always look like I'm worried or sad, which I am worried all the time. So (laughs) yeah, so that makes sense. That's part of the turbulence in me. Yeah. I always look angry. (laughs) Which it's just you being assertive. (laughs) Yeah. Cause I don't think I'm, I'm not, I'm not always angry. I used to be a very angry person. Like I used to think that I should probably go through anger management, but I think I grew out of that. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) exactly. But I think I grew out of that. I'm not as angry as I used to be. Yeah. But yeah. So that is the INTJ how to spot us, I guess, in public. (laughs) Which most of them were pretty accurate. Yeah, I think so too. Some of them, like, I feel like can go either way. And some of them, I feel like um, there's there's definitely a cultural aspect to who we are too. Yeah. Um, Being a Filipino plays a lot in my decision-making 
and it's like just engraved into you, you know, like, Mm -hmm. like I was just telling Joanne that my mom is still in my head a lot of times, even though I'm like almost 30. Yeah. And (laughs) I just can't help it. Oh yeah. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everyone, even though you have like similar personality types, you may test the same as one person, but doesn't mean you're exactly the same. You're going to be different in so many other ways still. Yeah, exactly. Because of how you grew up and whatnot. Yeah. But it is pretty eerie, like, how accurate this is. It's nice to know kind of why you think a certain way. Yeah. I think it helps also validate, like, parts of us, you know? Like, we aren't weird or different. I mean, I guess you could say we're weird because we're such a small percentage. (laughs) I definitely feel like better about who I am I guess yeah because, I don't know it's just nice to know that there are people that do these weird things or th- think a certain similar way as me yeah whereas in the past it's been so hard to find other people that are like that yeah I question myself all the time like why am I like this <laughs> yeah that's like the beauty of YouTube you mm-hmm. know because then you can just search up your your specific, like, um, Myers-Briggs personality. And yeah. you'll find, like, all kinds of resources and people who are just like you, even if it's, like, a small percentage. And this, that one chick, I forgot her name. The one with, like, purple hair. Or, oh, Lee jo? Yeah. Like, I she's like a pretty her. popular YouTuber, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really like her videos a lot. When it mm-hmm. comes to the INTJ stuff, that's mostly what she does. Other stuff, but um, I love watching like her INTJ videos because it really like I don't know. I I just get it. Mm-hmm. And I like how she talks because, like you know, I do the customer service voice a lot, but mm-hmm. she talks pretty similar to how I talk in real life. It's very yeah calm, monotone. Yeah. I think that's why I like listening to her, too, because I Mm -hmm. love the way she talks. I know Bailey said that my voice is soothing Mm -hmm. because I do. I actually do. Like, I've always liked that you were kind of monotone. Really? Yeah. I just I don't know why. No one has ever said that to me. I I always have. I don't know. Oh, I didn't know that. It is calming. So. Yeah, because I I well, I don't. Oh, I don't think I ever talked about this because I did talk about my monotone voice earlier Mm -hmm. but uh, it's hard for people to read me and so like I had that incident with my coworker um when she called me and she kept asking like is it a good time for you yeah yeah it's fine (laughs) like but and she kept asking and then I said um and then that's when I mentioned her I was like it's okay like I know that I have a monotone voice And it's hard for people to read me. And she's like, oh, she's like, oh, good. I wasn't going to say that, but I did it. She's like, yeah, I don't know what you're feeling right now. And I said, well, right now I'm pretty indifferent. So. I know. Like, I'm not in a meeting, so you're talking to me now. It's fine. I feel like we're just, like, just content. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, Like, I feel like. What? Like, that's all, all, all it is. It's not anything crazy. Like, you're not super happy. You're not sad or mad. You're just, like, content. hmm That's why I feel like if I, if I do talk like that around you, like, that's a good thing. hmm You know what I mean? Like, when I do have – yeah, exactly. Because when I am super expressive and – I mean, a lot of the times, like, with Bailey and Casey, I do – become a little more expressive around them because I do have like a really good time with them but like if it's just like one-on-one talking like just us you know intimate talking and I do have that monotone voice it's just because I'm becoming more and more comfortable with you whereas it's like if I'm super expressive what I'm really doing especially if I'm not if I don't really know you I'm I'm like mimicking your your reactions because that's what I think is like appropriate in that situation I've learned that that's called masking. Oh, there's a word for it. There's a word for everything. Which I've always felt like I've done that. And I I just recently found out what that is. 
That's and so now I feel less like a sociopath because <laughs> I realize I'm just masking. Oh, I need to look that up. <laughs> less than the INTJ thing. Um, <laughs> oh, I didn't know that was like a thing, but I guess mm-hmm. that makes sense. I'm sure a lot of people do that. Yeah. Well, thanks for getting on here. I feel like we talked for a super long time, but honestly, <laughs> I love, I love this whole thing. I love, I, I remember taking it in high school but I don't remember what I got. I wish I knew what I got. Yeah, I so think, I'm pretty sure I tested as like an INFJ in high school, mm-hmm. which makes sense because I feel like I teeter on the F and the T, like yeah. the feeling and the thinking. Yeah. Um, because even now my percentage for the thinking isn't super high. Yeah. It's just more than feeling, so. I also think like – because our brains aren't fully developed yet either. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like what you scored back then may be similar to what you would get now, but it's not like a hundred percent reflective yeah. of who you really are. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Cause we're still, cause in high school, like I wanted people to like me and I wanted friends mm-hmm. and stuff. And it wasn't until later that I realized that all of that's just so exhausting and I don't exactly. actually want it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because who doesn't really want to be, like, liked, <laughs> I guess? Yeah. Well, because that's, like, what gets, like, fed to you, you know? Like, every mm-hmm. movie, every TV show, like, that's what people want is to yeah. be liked and loved by many. Whereas, like, in reality, I'm okay being liked by maybe a couple. Like, oh, it's, yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, I was exactly. so worried in high school, like, if people <laughs> hated me. Mm-hmm. But now I'm like, I don't care. That's too bad for you because I'm a pretty awesome person. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's your that's your A right now. <laughs> Clearly is though, huh? Because I I I'm a fun person. I know you are. I mean, I I still hang out with you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> How many years now? Huh? It's been how many years now? Uh, I moved in with you guys in 2010. Okay. So 10 yeah. years. Yeah. You still deal with me, so that's fine. Yep. I volunteered to come on this podcast. Yeah. No one forced you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining me. Uh, I think we should do more like INTJ. Like we can have like an INTJ segment. There are so many, so many things to talk about. Yeah, exactly. Like there's, ugh, there's so many, so many. Yeah. I mean, that one chick has a whole YouTube channel about it. So there's I clearly <laughs> a lot to talk about. <laughs> about Too much. I know there are so many other things that I kind of wanted to talk about today, but this has gone on way too long to bring up those things. Yeah. And I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to be going to a barbecue right now. So. Oh, you are? Yeah. Is Fabian home? Yeah. Okay. Well, then you guys should probably, <laughs> you probably should like socially prepare for that. I know. I have been all day. Don't worry. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I've known about it for like a few days now, so. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Thank you. Anytime. I'm excited for the next one already. Me too. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you enjoy the show and want to stay in the know, please follow me on social media. I am on Facebook and on Instagram. You can also check out my website at thetalkativeintrovertpodcast.com. All the information will be on there as well as in the description. If you like the show, or even if you don't, uh, please consider rating and reviewing me on Apple Podcasts. If you leave a review, I'll make sure to feature it in a future episode. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you guys in the next episode.